Ireland or um, the southern part of the American uh, continent, should they be given accents? Um, I think it depends on. I think it depends on. Were you talking specifically about anime, or are you talking about like, anything in general? Um, well, well, yes, mostly animes, but. Yeah, mostly animes and a lot of things. Like See, for me, my own personal philosophy is that, like, I feel like if the character, it should go by the character. If the character is, if the character is um, from England, then sure, you should probably strive for a British accent or an Irish accent or a Russian accent if they're all, any if they're from those countries if that's their background. If it's like, if you're talking about like Osaka or something, that, then I think that gets tricky. Because I don't necessarily think like, because if you give somebody a southern accent, that's like southern, that's southern America. And if the anime is set in Japan, and it's very obviously Japan, I don't know that, sure, you're translating accents, but taking into context of just the story itself, it doesn't necessarily make that much sense. You know what I mean? You might as well give it a Japanese Osaka person speaking English, you know? But since you're not giving people accents in general, then I would say make it more of an attitude. Unless it's you're in a setting where it's not specifically Japan. So let's say the actress, like the Japanese seiyu, is doing like Osaka Ben, but like the, the storyline and the plot is like set in outer space or something like that. Then I feel like okay, then you could give it like a southern accent or something because it's not taking away from the story, you know, like the story. That's my personal. That's like that's my personal opinion. Um, so, but everybody, you know, and and when that stuff comes comes up, it's also not always like I think that fans are very quick to blame the director or even the dub studio. Mm -hmm. But something to keep in mind. Um, I mean, sometimes it is their call, but other times it's the client in Japan's call. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't want to do it, and then the client from Japan's like, well, this is what we want. And then that's what they have to do, and then they get blamed for it. Like, the fans get all mad, and they get blamed for it. So that's just like, same same thing with the actors, too. Like, they don't necessarily think it's right, but they're directed to be that way. Mm -hmm. They have to do that that way. Uh, it's kind of similar. Is there a, a specific situation or arc line or anything that was the most fun for you to record? Uh, just a lot of different things. Um, I thought like all the, the stuff I did in Lucky Star was a lot of fun with Akira. I always enjoy any any uh, any time I get to play like characters in different voices. So that was fun. Hare and Goo. If you guys ever watched that anime, mm -hmm. she also had two personalities and two different voices. That was a lot of fun to do. Um, yeah. So, yes, you were there. First, um, actually, a couple points. First, um, first question is, if you did have a chance to do an old school anime redo, would there be a particular character you'd like to play? You mean one that's already been dubbed, or? An, an old, in, yeah, something like the 60s, 70s, like the Zingers and the I'm not actually that familiar with the uh, with the robot anime. Um, or that yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. What about the uh, Sailor Moon? I'm not, I haven't watched so much Sailor Moon. I don't know actually. I don't. Any particular ones in the '80s? <laughs> like it's it's also it's also weird too because it's like you know like I thought. Because I don't know that I would want to redub of it. Like I, it would be cool to be part of like the Ranma dubs because that was like a, such a great show. But then again, I thought those dubs were really good, especially for the time period that it came out. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of like quality of things at that time, I really like those dubs. So I don't know that I would want to redub of it. You know, like yeah, um, yeah I don't know. Anybody else? Have Oh, I can't answer that question. It's just like, how many episodes are there? There's like way too many. There's like way too many. I mean, I guess maybe when like she says goodbye to Ichigo when she gets yeah. kidnapped, I guess. Like, that was yeah. a good scene. Yeah. Movie buckets was funny. Mm. Uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> could you, uh... I can't remember anything else right now. Yes. Uh -huh. um, 
So for the trailer for Resident Evil Re Revelations for the TGS trailer, was that recorded separately from your role in the actual game? Yeah, or? I'm not in the actual game, by the way. Well, so you, you your technically your character is, spoiler yes. alert, but you didn't do the uh, voice acting for that? No. Just the TGS trailer? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, how was that, uh, recording for a trailer, how does that differ from recording for a, a regular video game? Um, it was almost like it was just recording for a video game. Do you know what I mean? Because it, was, it wasn't like, there was a... I mean, it was pretty much like the same, like if it was a cutscene, I guess. If, if it was the actual game, I would have more to record, but it was just like a snippet, you know? Um, yeah. So. Oh, and also, how do, what, do, you have, do you have any feelings on the uh, misprint on Capcom? I want a copy. It's awesome. Revelatons. I yeah. love it. Does anyone have a copy? Is yeah, it still I out? Do they, do they pull it? I don't have my box with me, but I do have my copy on me. They released, like, a printout that corrects the spelling error, but why would you do that? A printout, you mean? Yeah, like a yeah. printout, like, you can slip it under your, oh. under your game case. No, I think I, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I mean, I guess I just think it's funny, but I, it doesn't bother me. Were people mad? No. They thought it was funny, right? That, they were stuff, but they didn't release it yet. They were snickering because this is not the first time Capcom has had printing errors on their boxes. They had, um, from Okami, they had the IGN watermark right on the front of the box. So. Yeah. I guess it's embarrassing. I don't know. But I think the hardcore fans, like, they'll like anything. They love, the people, the RE fans, are just like crazy about it, so. <laughs> yes. Uh, as a writer, would you ever want to novelize any of the, uh, anime I've never written a novel, so that's I, I don't really have the desire to. I mean, because I haven't I have never I've never written novel form, so um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't even consider myself really a writer. Adapting is very different than, than I think. Um, writing, writing, writing. Um, you in the back with the blue hair? Did you have purple hair? Did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Um, I came in late because I was just reading that, yeah. and I realized about everything, but. Are, are you going to be involved in Resident okay. Evil, any projects with the upcoming Resident Evil 6? I can't talk anything about it. I, mean, oh, really? I, can't, I can't say anything, I can't really? say yes or no about anything that is not, that is unreleased about Resident Evil. Right. The, I, can, I can talk a little bit about Revelations because that's out, right. but other than that I can't, um, it's a very strict NDA. And technically I can't, I can't really talk about anything that has to do with the Viz property either that is has not been released. So like anytime somebody asks what episode you're recording, I can't say anything oh. about either. Or like, is is this game coming out or is this movie coming out? I can't say anything. Oh. Um, I I would probably get fired and, really? and sued, so yeah. Can you uh, I was just wondering, are you involved or not involved? I can't say no. whether I am or not. <laughs> Can you uh Yes. What's Producing or directing or acting? Um, I'd say acting. Producing, directing, or acting. But I think producing and directing, in a way, are more, more rewarding. Because you? you're more invested in it. And in a way, it's harder work. Whereas an actor, you go into the room, you say your lines, and then you leave. You don't take it home with you. You're not stressing about anything. As a director, as a producer, you go home and mm. and you're worried about stuff. And you have right. you have scripts to yeah. read. You have things to prep. You have you know you have it's it's a lot. You're you're responsible for a lot more. So anyone else in this? Are, are you prevented from giving us a sample of your work? Also. Yes, especially okay. with the video cameras going. Here. Ah, very good. Uh -huh. yeah. Well. I mean, it's like a gray, fuzzy area, right. but I don't want to get in trouble. And there are, mm -hmm. there have been people who have been sued, so yeah. Because what would you say has been the most uh, racy? Uh, it's probably, hmm, uh, it's probably Kanazuki no Miko. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I got it. It's pretty like racy. It's like Michelle, sure? Michelle Ruff and I are like, it's pretty much girl on girl action. She like, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but I and it's kind of violent too. Like, so it was pretty. Like I was when I was recording, I was like, really? Is this? Oh, okay. 
I did not think that's where the score was going. Are you sure it's not Thor's fault? Um, no, because that was like, that was, there was a lot of, that was more implied innuendo, and that was a comedy, yeah. you know, and it was goofy, and like, in Kanazuki no Miko, it was like serious, it was, yeah, it was not, that, that was, it was very different, you know. How would like, you make, how would you make Oju and uh, It Gets Better on message? Say, say that again? How would you do an It Gets it gets better uh, sort of uh, video message. Wait, I don't understand. What do you uh, mean? No, it's, 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 it's these videos that people want to post online. Oh. Uh, like, like it, it gets better. Yeah, I don't know that it gets better for a story. Cause I don't want to give too much away if people haven't seen it, but it's also a cycle of reincarnation, <laughs> too. So it's like, it it's kind of sucks. <laughs> so, um, sucks for her anyway. Anyone else have any other questions? Or? When, you, when you do the voice recording, with the other actors? Nope. And no, you do nope. all of your own voice separate? Yeah, everyone, uh, especially for anime and video games, everything is separate. Um, there's a video game that I recently did that was different. That was a group record. Um, and all the original animation is a group record. But all all the other stuff is all recording separate. So you do have to kind of use your own imagination um, and be able to act with people not there. Yes, you, sir. Uh, can you expand on that? Um, is, is there any, because I, I know in, in Japan that you do, they do a lot yeah. of group recording. Yeah. Is, um, is, there an, is there an anime that you can think of that in the States where they had a group dub, or has it always been a process of group <laughs> um, I don't <coughs> think that there is a single anime that they've done a group dub for. Wow. Um, when we did I Buy Me Strawberry Eggs, there was an extra where the, there was like an extra that was an extra video. There was no syncing. It was all the characters like talking to each other, you know, like commenting on stuff. We recorded that together. Even, but not even everybody. It was like in pairs of people and that was recorded together. But not, not anything else. I think, um, I think in the very old, uh, the very first Bondi dub, I think it was like Diver or something like that. Like they recorded some, of, they tried to record some of that together, but it didn't work, and all the audio got screwed up, and they have to re-record. They had to re-record it anyway, separate. Um, but I mean, there's there's reason for that too, because in when I went to when I went to Japan, I watched a, a recording session for Kurokami, and they're they're just they're one they're more trained to do that stuff, but but also you know we're much more unforgiving for lip sync. And mm. I don't know how many times you guys have watched anime in Japanese, mm -hmm. and it doesn't match up the mouths. Like right. if you saw that in English, you'd be like, "What the f? Like these lazy actors?" You know what I mean? Um, also, too, like they're not always. Uh, it's just like open close, open close, um, and lots of times. Oh, in the session that I watched, it was um, the recording was done to animatics. So they have these little boxes that appear on screens with the character's name, and when it appears, you're supposed to be talking. And then when it disappears, you stop talking. But it's there's some leeway, and it's animatic, so the final animation isn't done yet. So as long as you're in the ballpark, they can always animate it to your performance. Mm -hmm. Whereas like when we come and dub it, it's completely done. So there's no way to fix it. So. To have a group recording, like, you would have to be, like, all the actors would have, be having to get the timing and get it the first take. Because if, we do, if each actor doesn't get the first take, then you got to restart. So then what's the point of having people in a group, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, a lot of it has to do with the syncing. And then also, um, when you're... When you're on a show for original animation, usually you record once a week, and that's your time slot. You know, I, I currently record a session, I have an ongoing session Tuesday mornings, and that's for that show. Every Tuesday morning, that's the show that I record, you know. Um, so, and the entire cast shows up. But, um, if you're talking about anime budgets, I mean, I don't, if you want to get into it, I can start talking about how the industry is doing and it's not doing very well because I even if you think about like how many of you guys probably purchase all of the anime that you watch in DVD form, it's not 
a lot. So there's no money to produce it. Well, I, so, I, well, I mean, I, I kind of wanted to ask, but it's kind of a self, you know, it's kind of a self-answering question. It's like, is there really, is there even a dub industry outside of Texas right now? Because um, has gone. I guess we'll have to see something. what happens. Um, yeah, well, it's it's very very small. We'll have to see what happens. Um, there, there's hope that maybe Japan is just going to hire a dub studio directly. Um, who knows? Um, but right now, like, Texas is probably the strongest uh, community or industry that's doing it anyway. So, um, and even, yeah, because, I mean, Media Blaster's not doing well either. Um, Bondi's gone. Aniplex is still around. This is around. Um, yes. Is there a huge difference between an anime budget and a game budget um, from your perspective? Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's a huge difference. It's a huge, huge difference. Um, it's not even. I make. Mean, right, let me do the math without being like two. I make about three and a half times more on on a video game session than I do in anime. Is the time more involved um, versus no. anime, or just the same? No, what do you mean? Um, Production-wise, like um, when you're, if you're doing like voice acting, is there? Is, is oh, is for there... voiceover, it, no, it depends on the part you get and how involved the syncing is and stuff like that. It, it doesn't, and how long the series is. So that's not really like when I say three and a half times. As much, I'm talking about if you were to if you were to consider my rate hourly, my rate is three and a half times higher doing a video game than it is doing anime. And generally speaking, for a video game, I have a four hour minimum. For anime, I have a two hour minimum. So if I go in and they're hiring for 15 minutes, I get paid for four hours, right? Or if I go in and I work for two hours, I get paid for four hours. But if I go in for anime and I work for two hours, I get paid for two hours. So it's it's very, very different. I mean, I, who here wants to be a voice actor? Okay. And who here wants to be specifically an anime voice, voice actor? Okay, that's good. That's really smart because I don't even know if there's an industry left for you guys <laughs> to be a part of. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's something to uh, keep in mind in terms of that. Sure, Texas, there's an industry, but Texas, the rate in Texas is lower than the rate in other markets. So there is there is that. But then the cost of living, I think, might be lower. So if you live there, then it's not so bad, I guess. Um, so there's, uh, that's if you only want to do anime. So yeah, so it's, it's a huge difference in terms of that. And same with original animation whatnot and I actually think dubbing anime is harder work than some video games unless it's a, unless you're screaming for four hours mm -hmm. then then it's harder. Do you have a preference over one or the other? Um, I think they're all different. I, I obviously don't want to be screaming for four hours um, but like they're all different so there's things that I like about doing game view and there's things that I like about doing anime they're different things so it's really hard to say that I don't like oh I don't want to do this or I don't you know so there's, there really isn't that. Then there's original animation, and that's totally different too. Yes, Paula. Hey, hi, Seth. Hey, hey question. Um, is the rate difference because of probably because the game, um, because games are more mainstream, and so you well, have more mainstream? Well, kind of yes, because because yeah. games are more mainstream, people are buying games, yeah. right? So if games are making money and they're buying the games, then when they produce them, they say we have this budget to make the game. And that includes the voice actors and the artists and the whatever, right? So it's like, it's a decent budget. They, like, you can pay someone what is it to make a good rate. But if you're talking about anime, nobody's buying it, you know? And even if they're watching it legally online, because you can watch it legally online, the percentage that the companies make is really small. So they don't make as much, right? So then their budget to dub it is so tiny. So they can't pay the actors very much, you know? Or... They're like, or it's like they can't guarantee a good quality because it's like we have to get this many lines done or else it's not, or else it's customers too much money. So we just have to, that's good enough. Go on to the next line. You know, it's not about like, oh, we want to create the best quality. stuff ever, you know, right. because they can't afford it. So. Yeah.
Yeah, that's a shame because a lot of people don't know this disparity between anime, anime dubbing and game dubbing and why, you know, because they'll think, oh, you know, you, you speak less lines at, you know, on the game, yeah. why are you getting paid more? But they don't know this, sorry. Yeah, it's all, you know, you can only put into what you make. It's like, obviously, if I was making a t-shirt, right, and, and like 10,000 people wanted to buy the t-shirt, then I could say, hey, I can afford to spend a little bit more money on better fabric, you know? Mm -hmm. But if it's like, I'm making a t-shirt and only five people are going to buy it, it's like, oh gosh, this is all, and I need to, I need to make money and that, you know, and the hours spent on it, ugh, I can only use this fabric or I got I gotta got someone who can like sew really fast and it's going to be sloppy, you know? It's kind of like the same idea, I think, that, that people don't really understand. So it'll be interesting now that Bondi is gone to see what happens. Know, with the industry. Um, you guys all know that Bondi is no longer, right? Do you guys yeah. know about that? What's going to happen to Sorry, what? I do not think it's fair for Bandai to, you know. What do you mean by fair, though? You know, I don't think it's fair that Bandai has, has stopped releasing DVDs and. But it's, I don't think it's a question of fair or not fair. If you had a business and you owned a store, you know, and nobody was coming to your store, you still have to pay rent, you have to pay your employees, you have to pay all this stuff, and if you can't pay those things, at some point you have to decide, I gotta close my store. So it's not about fair, you know what I mean? Like, they, they had no choice. So I mean, it's, I know, I have so many friends, they worked there for like over 10 years, and they're out of a job. So it's it's not even about like sure it's it really stinks that you guys can't get your anime but then there's people out of work too you know like who dedicated their life to like working in this industry and now they're out of a job so yeah it's not fair to them either but it's it's not like they're doing it to to screw you guys over they're doing it because if 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 the business was doing well are you kidding me of course they would want to sell DVDs and whatnot so yes well, I, I guess maybe like the I guess most of the bang, bang zooms work since like the like band X ones like they get under your foundation and then this or something like that. I have no idea. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, but thanks for hiring me as an actor, but I don't know what happens internally with them, and they're just a recording studio, which means Funimation could hire Bang Zoom. You know, they're recording. Bondi would hire Bang Zoom. Whoever would hire Bang Zoom. It's not the other way around. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Have there been any voices that you hope you wanted to use but haven't got the chance to use it in anime or video games yet? So much, I guess. No, so much. I don't know. Who knows? I don't, I, who knows? Ah, maybe voices I haven't come up with. I don't know. <laughs> Weird question. I don't know. And if yeah. And if you were ever offered a uh, spot on Simpsons or Family Guy, would you ever take it? Oh, I totally turned that down. Are you kidding me? No, I would take it. I mean, that's like, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's, I want. I I'm auditioning for things all the time. Like it's not. It's not about turning it down. Like oh, I don't want to work on this job. You know. So, anyone else? Anyone who has an essay? Yes, you. Uh, do you ever take liberties in any of your lines? Like change them up from what's on the script or deviate? Um. I remember Johnny talked about that once before. You said you changed a couple things in each. Add liberties. Just add um. Generally, the writers take a, they spend a lot of time coming up with those lines, so I generally don't, but if something feels unnatural to me, I will ask the director, hey, is it okay if I say this? Um, but it's more just about, like, this comes out more naturally for me. I'm not, like, changing the meaning, you know what I mean? I'm just maybe rewording some things, you know, or if it's, like, too long or too short, then, you know. Or something, like, and it depends sometimes on the project. Sometimes you do a project on something and you're like, I don't think that's what it means, you know? And then you might have a discussion with the director, they might call somebody in or they'll get an alt or something like that, you know? So, uh, is somebody back there? Do you ever get tired of saying Chris and Naruto? No. No. I don't think well, I, I mean, say, I don't think I can say. Because um, I know yeah. that both those characters say a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't get tired of it. <laughs> you guys have any other questions? Sure. What time? How much time do we have? So we have a lot of time. Have you ever done any work?
part in which you really got to go all out with language or stuff? What do you mean? What does that mean? Um, like, you got, you got to go all out say, you know, F word. There was one game that I did where it was like that. It was pretty funny. I don't think it was ever released. It was supposed to be called Vegas, and it was like really. Oh, oh, and there was. Do you know what I'm talking? Do you know about this game? It's a video game. It was like really hardcore. The lines were so funny. I've heard about it. And then like, yeah, it was like one of the best strips that I'd ever. It was a lot of swearing and a lot of like. Um, yeah. Uh, so. I mean, some, some, but not. Yes, you over here. Oh, has anything happened while recording? Okay, so um, she asked, does anything funny happen while recording? So when I was recording I, My, Me, Strawberry Eggs, Crispin Freeman was directing. And then as I was in the booth, he started, after I did my line, he was like, <sighs> so shaking his head. And then he ran out of the booth. And I was like, oh, he ran out of the control room. And I was like, oh. Not bad. So then I run outside, and they're like, "Oh, they're screaming!" So the studio owner had just got a dog um, that day, like picked up. I don't know, a stray dog or whoever, whatever. And the dog apparently, Riley, he wandered into the control room and he pooped in the control room underneath the desk on top of a bunch of wires. Oh. And then, and then, like, I came out and they were like, oh, the dog poop. And I was like, well, I was like, is it at least like a easily clean up a bowl poop? And then, and Chris was like, wires. And then I, and I went into the control room just to look at it. And I went in and I was like, woo, I was hit with the smell immediately. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I'm in that room. Smell proof, sound proof. Um, that was pretty, that was pretty. Yes, so are you. Silly question, I guess. Mm -hmm. With all your animated roles that you've done, whenever you come across a figure of your character that you portrayed, what, what, do, you, what do you use your reaction to pick one up? You just put it like on your desk? Or... Um, okay. This is going to make me seem like a really boring person. You guys know that I started out as a fan, right? right. Okay. So even very early on, when I was just a fan and I wasn't working in the industry, I remember the first couple AXs that I went to, like I spend... I spent so much money on just stuff. And also, they would give you free stuff. And then I would think, oh, free stuff, free posters, free whatever. I would take it all. And then I would come home, and all of a sudden, the free stuff doesn't look as cool once it's at home. I don't know if you have this, had this happen yeah. to you. It's much cooler at the convention. And then at home, it's not as cool. And I like don't really like throwing things away. So then I was like, oh, that was all this stuff. And so then I made kind of this like rule for myself. Whereas like I didn't I I wouldn't buy something unless it was like useful. Right? So if I saw like something that I liked, it had to like have some sort of function. Like it had to be like a pencil or something I could put something in or a clear file or you know, like so I don't really I'm not I don't really get into the whole figure thing. Although certain figures I think are really beautiful, I'll just I'll treat it like Shopping is like, oh, it's there, and then I admire it. Um, that said, a few people have given me some figures, and I've kept them, you know, and they're, I have a display that I keep them there. And I and I like, like it, and I enjoy it. But if I went around collecting every single figure of every single show that I worked on, it would just be, like, too many <laughs> figures. So that's kind of, like, how I've, how I've treated that. Like, that's, like, for myself, you know. Um, and then even start, since I've started doing the We Heart Japan stuff, I've actually started taking that stuff and like donating it because then I think about it, I was like, this can sit in my room and I can look at it every once in a while and say, oh, that's cool and I really like it. Or I can take it and give it to somebody, you know, and try to raise some money for Japan and have somebody who would enjoy it more and enjoy it more. So. Anyone else? Yes, you. Out of all of the characters that you've done, do you have a favorite? I don't really, and it changes, um, so it's really hard to pick. Yeah, it's hard too. It's like I, I don't. There's like a bunch of shows that I like, but then it always changes. So I can't. I can never like. I don't have a favorite movie, a favorite whatever. Like, yeah. I,
Have you ever um, hung out with any of the uh, recent news uh, or Sometimes. Work with my Sometimes. Um, generally, we're so busy that we don't get to hang out so much. Um, we used to hang out a lot more before people had babies. <laughs> <laughs> By that I really mean Liam O'Brien. He's <laughs> 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 always like, ever since he had his two babies, who I love. Um, but we just don't see him as much. But then Sam is really busy like writing stuff for like TV and comedy stuff that he does, so he's really busy too. Um, and then Patrick moved to Orange County, so I barely see him anymore. He used to live in Hollywood, so he would like go get frozen yogurt and stuff, but then he moved. We like moved like an, over an hour away, so or Riverside, or I don't know where he moved to, but it's far. I've never even been to his place so far. Um, so sometimes we hang out. Like generally, it's most likely work week we get to see each other. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you had a question, right? Over here. Um, you with the Nico Nico shirt right. and the hat. Oh yeah, harder ask one. Yeah, but you can ask another one. Oh, well, I'll pick up one. Oh, I thought you had your ring. Is there a show that you? weren't involved in that you wish you could have been involved in? There's like always shows like that. And when it happens, I'm like, ah! And then and then afterwards I forget. Like, I mean, I forget, but then like, I'm over it. Like, it's not over it, but it's just like, oh, okay. You know, it's like when you want something really bad, you're like, ah! And then like, a year later, you're like, oh yeah, it's kind of bummed up, it didn't happen, but like, oh, well, you know. So, I try to think of it as like, with anything in life, like if you really want something and then you don't get it, then I think to myself, well, if I was working on that, then I couldn't have done this. So maybe something better is going to come along, or maybe like I try not to be too attached to things. Um, yes. Uh, speaking of that subject, I heard rumors that you did um, Snivy and Frillish on Pokemon. Is... No, I've never worked on a single Pokemon. Oh, uh, I thought so. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I couldn't be Stephanie Cajun. No, I didn't. I'm not working. On yes. Um, just curiosity, I went up looking up your bio, I noticed you went by a bunch of different names sometimes. Yeah, I had an identity crisis. Okay, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious why, I, I just, just um, that I happened. know you take industry, a lot of people take industry names, but I mean, I just, it was interesting. Okay, so this is what happened, okay, so when I first started working, I started out as a producer. I was a fan, and then a producer, and then an actor, and the very first show that I produced.